Bhagavad Gita, the song of the Lord. In this video series, I'm going to be sharing with you some of the biggest takeaways that I've gotten after reading this text really gets to the essence of how we can live lives of spiritual fulfillment, what it truly means to live a life of meaning, of purpose, of impact, and how to go about everyday life, right? So a lot of people get caught up in the details because the premise is basically that Arjuna has to go up against his own family in war because of political reasons, like his cousins have been taken over the throne that belongs to his brother. And there's a lot of backdrop in terms of the politics that's going on behind this war, right? People are arguing about whether this war actually took place, whether Krishna is actually the Lord, like they can't see the forest for the trees, right? In other words, they get caught up in the details and forget about how they can actually apply these lessons into their life, right? So the intention of this video series is to give you an overview of what I've extracted from these ideas, right? Understand that at the end of the day, it's all about what we do with what we know, not about what we know. People are arguing, people are talking about what's right, what's wrong. But at the end of the day, the only thing that matters is what you do with this information, right? So I'm going to be sharing with you some of the big takeaways. And in this video, the first in this series is really about the spiritual awakening, waking up to who you really are. And this is really the first lesson that Krishna delivers to Arjuna. Right. So I'm going to be reading some quotes from directly from the book. I read the translation in English, of course. So I'll be linking out to that below as well. You can check that out. But let's start with this first quote that Krishna delivers to Arjuna. OK, the impermanent has no reality. Reality lies in the eternal. Those who have seen the boundary between these two have attained the end of all knowledge. Realize that which pervades the universe and is indestructible. No power can affect this unchanging, imperishable reality. The body is mortal, but that which dwells in the body is immortal and immeasurable, right? So the first lesson is to realize that you are not your body, right? Your body is something that you have. Your body is the vehicle of consciousness and consciousness is that eternal aspect of your being right you are a human being human on the level of form on the level of conditioning who you were conditioned by your environment by your genetics right by all of this information that you picked up through your lifetime and that human aspect of you is not who you really are because as krishna is talking about over here the only thing that is real is that which always will be real, right? Your body is not who you are, that's your vehicle. Your mind is not who you are, that is your software that you're running through and it's the compilation of impressions that you've picked up through your life. So really getting touch with the essence of who you are is what it starts with, right? Understanding that you are outside of the chatter that's going on between your ears, you are outside this body that's gonna age, that's gonna go and it's come into this world, it's gonna leave this world, but you have to identify with something that is beyond both of these things, something that will stand the test of time, something that always is, right? So what is this imperishable, eternal aspect of your being? This brings us to the next quote, right? So Krishna says, those who are established in wisdom live in continuous, unbroken awareness that they are not the perishable body, but the Atman. Further, they see the same in everyone, for the Atman is universally present in all. Atman, Atman, I don't know what, how you pronounce the actual word in Sanskrit, but the Atman is the essence of who you are, right? Now, the heart of the Gita really gets to seeing the divine in everything and everyone and realizing that the Atman is the common denominator between all of life, right? Aldous Huxley, who is a great author, he came up with the perennial philosophy, right? He said, what are the commonalities that exist between all the great spiritual traditions of our world? And there was three aspects that really he came down to, right? The first one is that there is something beyond the change. There is something that underlies this world of change that we live in, right? And that is something that all the religious texts get to. There's something eternal. There's something beyond the physical, right? There's something beyond what our eyes can see, what our ears can hear, right? 
That's the first aspect of it. The second aspect of it is that this changeless aspect is also behind the core of every human personality, right? That aspect of who you really are is the same amongst you and everyone in your life and everyone that you come across in your life, right? And the third pillar of the perennial philosophy is that purpose of life is to realize this aspect of who you really are, to realize the Atman, right? So when we go about our lives and we are really identifying something outside of us, realize that all of your experience in life is taking place within your own nervous system, right? Everything is taking place within your own consciousness. And even if you feel something like if I touch your hand right now, you're like, okay, I'm feeling this because the stimulus is that you touched my hand, but that stimulus is being picked up by your skin, which is being sent to your brain. And then your brain is creating that experience of being touched right now. So at the end of the day, everything that you experience is taking place within your own nervous system, right? So everything is within you. And once you realize that everything is within you and that same aspect, that consciousness on which you feel, the field is consciousness and the game being played is your experiences in life and realizing that the field is going to be the same for everyone, right? The consciousness is the same, but then the experiences that take place are going to be different depending on your current situation, on where you were born and all of this, right? But once you can see the Atman in everyone, once you can see the divine in everyone and everything, then you're really getting to the core essence of what message the Gita is trying to deliver to us, right? So it's not about just understanding these ideas. It's about actually living them. That is why they say Namaste, right? They say Namaste because it's bowing to the divine within you, right? These are uh, terms that have been around for so long, but do we actually know what they mean? Because the intention through which we use them determines how they affect our vibration, the vibration of the people that we impact, right? So getting to the core of what this actually means is living these ideas rather than just talking about them. And of course, making this video as part of my process and actually learning, embodying them deeper and being able to actually live them rather than just talk about them, right? Now, the third critical aspect is that of controlling your senses, right? Once you realize that you're not your body, once you realize you're not your mind, then it comes down to taking that seat of your spirit, of your Atman, of the divine core of your personality and controlling your senses. Okay. And I quote here, Krishna says, those established in self-realization control their senses instead of letting their senses control them. If the senses are not controlled, the mind will follow wherever they lead. Right? So this is a primary teaching of the Hindu philosophy realizing that the pull of the senses is strong, right? We are pulled towards pleasure. We are pushed away from pain. That is like the fundamental operating system that our mind operates through, right? But if we can control our senses rather than have our senses control us, that is when we master ourselves. That is when we begin mastering our lives, right? Any one of your destructive habits that you have, whether it's eating too much, whether it's watching too much porn, whether it's watching too much TV, whatever it is, it's because you've been conditioned to chase that dopamine thrill, right? The dopamine of pleasure, which really rewires that behavior into your mind so that you do it again and again and again. But even though it's damaging to you, to your well being over the long term, you still do it because you've been conditioned by your move towards pleasure and away from pain, right? But once you can begin to disconnect from your senses and realize and not identify with your mind, with your body, with your senses, then you can begin to act in your best interest, act based on what you know already is best for you and grow that distance between the stimulus and the response and choose the behavior and choose the expression of you, which actually demonstrates the divine core of your personality, right? So self-discipline is really at the essence of what we're talking about over here. Can you do the right thing over the easy thing again and again and again? Can you control your senses, even though you feel like eating that sugar right now, even though you feel like watching that porn right now, are you in control of your senses to the point where you direct your decisions rather than your senses directing your decisions, right? That really is step number one towards actually experiencing that higher level of consciousness, whereby you realize you're not your body, 
you realize you're not your mind, right? It's easy to understand these ideas intellectually. I'm not my body, I'm not my mind, but are you actually living in alignment with that idea? Do you actually control your senses? Do you actually resist the urge to go and binge on that sugar, to binge on that TV? Do you have the space between stimulus and response, right? At the end of the day, it all comes down to our decisions on a day-to-day -day basis, okay? Now, the final idea is that of detachment, right? And I quote Krishna over here. He says, seek refuge in the attitude of detachment and you will amass the wealth of spiritual awareness. Those who are motivated only by desire for the fruits of action are miserable for they are constantly anxious about the results of what they do. Detachment is required if one is to act in freedom rather than merely reacting to events as compelled by conditioning. Right. So detachment is a huge aspect of the Gita as well. And he basically says, Krishna to Arjuna, that you are entitled to the work. You are entitled to the action, but you are not entitled to the fruit of the action. Right now, this is something that I have been thinking about a lot. Right. I think it's going to really take a lifetime to really clarify my intention again and again and again. Like, why do you do what you do? Like asking myself that question again and again and again. And if ever I see that the motivation behind what I'm doing right now is driven out of selfish desire, is driven out of my own insatiable appetite to get something from outside, right? Which is driven to get a result, then I'm only reinforcing the fact that I'm not enough and thereby I'm operating out of fear. I'm operating out of the lens of scarcity, right? But when we can detach from the results of our action, then we won't have anxiety about actually getting the result. We realize that we're doing the work that we're here to do right now because that is our duty. That is our obligation, right? That is who we are as people who are entitled to the action, right? Because we're doing the work, but we are disconnected from getting the result or not. That is outside of our hands, whether the result takes place or not. I was listening to Wes Watson, right? He spent 10 years in prison and now he's like leading a movement and he has like a multiple seven figure business as well. And he was saying, he, I think he's influenced by the Gita as well, but he said the man who is more obsessed with the process than the result cannot be stopped, right? You cannot be stopped if you are in love with the process right now. Of course, it's easier said than done. Of course, it's so difficult to detach from the outcome because that's what we've been conditioned by, right? But that is what it's about. Getting rid of our conditioning, letting go of the conditioning that holds us back from realizing who we truly are, right? Detachment is the practice of letting go of that selfish desire of the result and only focusing and narrowing down on the process that is in front of you, knowing that it's your duty and obligation to do the work. And whether that work results in the fruit of the action is outside of your control at the end of the day. Okay, so these are the first few ideas that I'm going to be sharing with you in this video. We have more videos coming up, so definitely subscribe below. I'm going to be releasing about four more videos on in this series on decoding the Gita, right? So I can really get to the core of what my main extractions were from reading this text and embody them deeper as well and hopefully inspire you to live these practices in your life rather than just think about them, rather than just talk about them, right? This is not about religion. Right? Corporate religion. This is right. That's wrong. That's wrong. This is right. If you don't believe me, I'm going to kill you so that I can be right. Like, it's like getting to the core of why we are here right now. And as the Gita talks about, the core of every human personality is the same. The Atman is similar across all of the people, right? We are all from the same source. We are all going to go to the same source and realizing that every aspect of who you truly are is the same in every other person as well then we can be kinder to people because we're kinder to ourselves because we identify with who we really are rather than who we are conditioned to be, right? So this is the first video in this series. Definitely subscribe. Keep an eye out for the next few videos. I'm going to be releasing them uh, in the next four days as well. So there's a total of five videos in this series. So subscribe below if you haven't already. I hope that you have gotten value from this and I will see you in the next video.